Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. In this video, we're taking the tried and true Ryzen 5 1600, everyone's favorite mid-range desktop processor, and pairing it against everyone's favorite mid-range desktop processor, the Core i5-8400. See, no bias from us. If you, likely a male between the age of 25 and 34, have almost, but not quite $200 US to spend on a CPU, which one do you get? Rather than spend countless hours benchmarking an effort to determine a winner, let's just turn to Amazon and let you guys sort it out for me. Ryzen 5 1600, four and a half stars from almost 400 reviews. Very nice stuff there. Surely that is gonna get it over the line. Right, the Core i5 8400, four and a half stars from almost 400 reviews. Hmm. All right, fine, we'll do this the hard way. Okay, so as usual, before we get to those glorious blue bar graphs, there are a few things worth mentioning. The Ryzen 5 1600 was released almost this time last year on April 11th at $220 US. And with six cores and 12 threads, it was seriously impressive given that price tag. Last month though, AMD did officially reduce the pricing of their entire Ryzen lineup. And this saw the 1600 drop down to $190 US. The reason they've done this is because shortly the second generation Ryzen processors will become available and many shoppers are now well aware of this fact. So in an effort to drive sales of the first gen parts, the discount campaign begun. At this point though, we recommend you wait a few weeks before making any CPU purchases and then reevaluate your options. So that being said, why bother with this comparison at all? Well, for a few reasons, most notably of which is the fact that these second gen Ryzen parts are incoming. By establishing how AMD and Intel currently stack up with the latest Windows updates, BIOS updates, driver updates, and new motherboards, we'll have an up-to-date reference point for the new CPUs. A big part of Ryzen's appeal is the value aspect. You can throw the Ryzen 5 1600 on a relatively inexpensive motherboard, overclock the snot out of it, and you're away. Meanwhile, the Core i5-8400 up until about a week ago was stuck on the Z370 platform, a platform that for the most part it can't utilize, so the added price on the motherboard hurts its value. Now though, we do have the H310, B360 and H370 boards, and these help to shave a little bit off the top. So this changes the value aspect of the more affordable Coffee Lake CPUs and makes them somewhat more appealing to budget shoppers. Therefore, for this test, we're going to compare the Ryzen 5 1600 using DDR4 3200 memory on the MSI B350M mortar in its out-of-the-box configuration, as well as a 4 GHz overclock using a basic tower-style air cooler. Then, the Core i5-8400 has been tested on two motherboards, one of which is the cheapest B360 motherboard MSI makes, the B360M Pro VD. On this budget B360 board, we're using DDR4 2666 memory and the box cooler. Additionally, the Core i5 process has been tested on the MSI Z370 PC Pro with DDR4 3200 memory and a basic tower style air cooler. So I think that just about covers all the bases. Oh, and before anyone asks, no, MCE wasn't enabled in any of the Core i5-8400 tests, mostly because you can't actually enable this feature on any of the locked Intel CPUs, regardless of which 300 series motherboard you're using. All right, so kickstarting off the blue bar graph parade is Sysoft Sandra's memory bandwidth test. And here we're looking at the sustained read write performance in gigabytes per second. The Core i5-8400 on the B360 motherboard is limited to just under 27 gigabytes per second as the maximum memory support for this chipset is DDR4-2666. However, using a Z370 board with DDR4-3200 memory, that increased the throughput by 22% and it resulted in a bandwidth of 32.7 gigabytes per second. So pretty impressive stuff, but it did still place it behind the Ryzen 5 1600, which was good for around 39 gigabytes per second, again with DDR4-3200 memory. And this is with the Ryzen CPU both stock and overclocked. Before we get into the real world applications, here's a look at the Cinebench R15 scores. I know all you guys love a good Cinebench score. And as always, please note that these are not the absolute best scores. These scores are based on an average of half a dozen back-to-back -back runs. As expected, what this shows us is that Intel enjoys greater single core performance, while Ryzen's many threads, thanks to the use of SMT, gives it superior multi-threaded performance. Demonstrating the excellent multi-threaded performance of the Ryzen processor is the V-Ray benchmark. Rather than spitting out a score like what Cinebench does, what we're looking at here is the render time measured in seconds, so lower is better. 
Here we see that the stock Ryzen 5 1600 was 16% faster than the 8400 on the B360 board and 13% faster than the 8400 on the Z370 board. Overclocking the 1600 improved performance by 16% and now the AMD CPU is at least 31% faster than the Core i5 8400. When it comes to video editing, the superior IPC of the Core i5 processor and the often higher clock speeds that are achieved when doing these lightly threaded editing tasks gives the Intel CPU an advantage. Ryzen isn't exactly slow in comparison, but it's not a slam dunk case for AMD like what we've seen in the previous tests. And we'll cover a bit more on editing performance when we get to the Premiere Pro results later in this video. Moving right along to the physics performance in games. Here we see that if a game is well designed to take advantage of Ryzen's many threads, it could allow the R5 1600 to dominate the 8400 even when left stock. Of course, this isn't the case in 99% of the games out there. In fact, even today, Ashes of the Singularity is one of the few examples we have of a well designed game that can take advantage of many cores. Before we get into the games though, we have a few more productivity benchmarks to check out, and here we can see how these CPUs compare in Corona. AMD's Ryzen 5 1600 enjoys a big win in this benchmark, completing the rendered time 27% quicker than that of the Core i5-8400. That margin grows to 30% once the 1600 is overclocked, and the 8400 is thrown on a Z370 board, so a great result here for AMD. Lower is better for the blender test as we're again measuring the time it takes to complete the render. Out of the box, the Ryzen 5 1600 is superior, beating the 8400 by a 6% margin, even when it's using the higher speed memory on the Z370 board. Overclocking the Ryzen processor reduced the render time by 13%, making it clearly superior in this test. Moving on to handbrake, here the Core i5-8400 was faster than the R5-1600, albeit by a small margin. Still, we do see an 8% increase in performance when going from 9.3 frames per second to 10 frames per second. However, once we overclock to 1600, performance is boosted by 14%, and this is enough to edge out the 8400, even when it's paired with higher frequency memory on a Z370 board. Encoding one of our 4K videos, like the one you're watching right now, Premiere saw both processors deliver very similar performance out of the box. Feeding the Core i5-8400 more bandwidth reduced the encode time by 5%, which isn't bad, but we saw a 16% reduction in code time by overclocking Ryzen. This meant best case scenario for the Intel CPU still sees at 13% slower in this test. However, when it comes to editing, as we noted earlier in this video, when we're looking at the PC Mark results, the performance is a little more competitive. Generally speaking, these editing tasks don't fully utilize the thread heavy Ryzen processors, and we certainly see that when using the warp stabilizer effect in Premiere. Still, with performance from both CPUs maximized, we do get a very similar result. Now, if you love Excel spreadsheets like Tim and myself, then Ryzen's going to impress. The complex Monte Carlo simulation completed 23% faster with Ryzen, though admittedly it's rare that you'll do too many Excel jobs that take either of these CPUs more than a few seconds to complete. Then we have the 7-zip test in here. The stock R5 1600 was 15% faster than the 8400 when carrying out compression work, but a massive 40% faster for decompression. Pairing the 8400 with high-speed memory only improves its performance in this test by about 2%. Meanwhile, overclocking the Ryzen processor increased performance by a further 8 to 15%, giving it a significant advantage over the Core i5-8400 in this workload. Before we move into the gaming benchmarks, which I'm sure many of you guys have been hanging out to see, here's a quick look at power consumption. The MSI B360M Pro VD is very fuel efficient, and it allows total system consumption of the Core i5-8400 system to drop under 100 watts for this heavy workload, which is very impressive. Moving to the MSI Z370 PC Pro with the fast DDR4 memory, this did increase power draw by 24%, and it did only reduce the render time by a mere 2%. Meanwhile, the Ryzen 5 1600 did consume quite a bit more power, certainly was the more power-hungry CPU of the two, but keep in mind Blender does utilize all 12 threads, so a 65% jump from the stock 8400 isn't that bad given it does have 100% more threads. When compared to the Z370 configuration, the margin is significantly reduced as well. For this comparison, the Ryzen CPU was 32% more power-hungry. So, as I said in my initial B360 coverage, these stripped down motherboards really help to improve the performance per watt of the Coffee Lake CPUs. 
Overclocked, the R5 1600 consumed a little over 70% more power than the 8400 on the Z370 motherboard. And that sounds like a lot, and well, it is. However, keep in mind this is total system consumption. All 12 threads are under heavy load. So the fact that the system's drawing just 200 watts from the wall isn't exactly that extreme. Now onto some games, and as noted earlier, this is one of the few modern tiles that does a good job of utilizing the Ryzen CPUs. It's not often you'll see results like these when looking at gaming performance, and as AMD's luck would have it, they just so happen to kick some serious silicon in one of the few games nobody really plays, hence the name Ashes of the Benchmark. Here we see what's probably a more typical uh, picture when comparing the Ryzen and Coffee Lake CPUs in games when we test with Assassin's Creed Origins. It's not a terrible picture, but Intel is up to 20% fast with a high-end GPU at 1080p. I'll discuss what this means later in the video. For now though, let's check out a few more games. From day one, Battlefield 1 is a game that's played quite well with the Ryzen CPUs, and we see that that's still the case. Although still slower than the Core i5-8400, the margins are small enough to deem them insignificant, especially when looking at the all-important 1% low results. Far Cry 5 is also very playable with the Ryzen 5 1600, despite the Core i5-8400 delivering superior performance. Overclocked, the R5 1600 does close the gap, but it is still 7% slower than the 8400 on the B360 board and that is for the 1% lower result, and 12% slower for the average frame rate. I was expecting the Ryzen 5 1600 to stack up a bit better in Overwatch, I have to say, and while you can't say that over 160 FPS at all times is bad, I was expecting the Core i5-8400 to pull away for the average frame rate rather than the 1% low result. In any case, both provided extremely smooth performance with the GTX 1080 Ti. Finally, we have Warhammer Vermintide 2, and this recently released title does a good job of utilizing the Ryzen 5 1600. The Ryzen CPU was just 13% slower for the 1% low result, and 4% slower for the average frame rate. Again, both CPUs provided highly playable performance. Okay, so we've had a pretty good look at application and gaming performance. As expected, Intel's faster in games for the most part, while AMD's faster for most of the heavy workloads, especially the ones that we tested. Uh, that being the situation, this is how I look at it. Even with a GTX 1080 Ti at just 1080p, there's really no telling which CPU you're using when gaming. Both are exceptionally smooth and enable high frame rates, certainly high enough for your average gamer. When it comes to things like extracting a compressed archive, you're absolutely going to notice a 60% reduction in time there. Uh, even Blender, where the overclock Ryzen 5 1600 shaved off just 20% from the completion time, basically that means for a job that takes the Intel CPU an hour and six minutes, you're looking at around 53 minutes with the Ryzen CPU, giving you a 13 minute head start to move on to the next job, and over the course of a day, that really does add up. Of course, the time saving could be even larger than that. We saw Ryzen shave 30% off Intel's render time in Corona. Naturally though, it could also be less than that. We did see just a 16% reduction with Premiere Pro and then virtually nothing with Handbrake. Though that particular break even situation appeared to be sort of a worst case scenario for AMD. We also saw when overclocked Ryzen only matched the warp stabilization performance of the Core i5 8400 and Premiere. Still, what this shows is that for heavy workloads, the Ryzen 5 1600 is king, and it's worth keeping in mind that this is something that everyone will benefit from regardless of their hardware configuration. Meanwhile, to enjoy the Core i5 superior gaming performance, you really need an extreme graphics card. With a GTX 1070 or less, the difference won't really be seen on the frame rate counter. Of course, there is the little matter of which CPU will offer the best experience in two to three years time, and well, let's be honest, that's really anyone's guess. I wouldn't dare waste your time speculating about such a thing. What I will do though is break down the pricing and work out which platform offers you the most bang for your buck. Starting with memory prices, the difference between DDR4-2666 and DDR4-3200 really is negligible at this point. And most of the time, you're not really paying a premium for the higher clock stuff. Then B360 and B350 motherboards of similar quality cost around the same amount. I'd expect to pay around $80 for a quality board. Then with both CPUs costing around the same amount, buyers are looking at spending around $430 US for either combo with 16GB of DDR4 memory. If you want to pair the Core i5-8400 with a Z370 board, which I think I would recommend doing at this point, then it's going to cost around $40 more, making Intel's platform about 9% more expensive. 
The reason I wouldn't bother with the B360 or H370 boards, in my opinion anyway, just comes down to a lack of features, and of course they don't support overclocking. Although you can't actually overclock the Core i5-8400 on a Z370 board, it does give you more options in the future if you want to upgrade to an unlocked processor, and it'll also fetch a better price on the secondhand market. Anyway, if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine. And what it means is that the 8400 can be snapped up with motherboard memory for about the same price as the Ryzen 5 1600 on a B350 board. So pricing has been somewhat neutralized. This leaves AMD and Intel in a bit of a stalemate, to be honest. They both have their strengths and weaknesses, of course, but overall they are very evenly matched. And while you'll no doubt see a fair bit of combat in the comment section below, Let's be honest, I really can't imagine you'd be anything but impressed with either solution. That said, you guys are going to want to hear which one I would pick, and if I was forced to pick, which I suppose I would be if I was buying one of them, uh, I'd probably still purchase the Ryzen 5 1600 for the simple fact that I do spend more time working on my PC than playing. It's a sad fact but it's also true. I also like the idea that AMD is promising future compatibility with new Ryzen CPUs. Intel, on the other hand, will likely ditch their current mainstream platform after the next processor release. Still, as I said earlier, none of this probably matters right now as I would actually hold off on buying either a Ryzen or Coffee Lake CPU till the second generation Ryzen series arrives later this month at which point you'll then have access to what'll probably be slightly faster Ryzen CPUs, and then existing Ryzen CPUs, like the R5 1600 that we're talking about, should become even cheaper. Anyway, what today's video has shown us is that if AMD can indeed find another 10% performance with the second gen Ryzen CPUs, then they're gonna be in great shape. And that is gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the Ryzen 5 1600 versus Core i5 8400 comparison. Yeah, it's an 8400. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time.